If n equals 240 and p hat equals 0.4, construct a 90% confidence interval. Give your answers to three decimal places. In order to do this, uh, we can either use formulas or we can use the calculator. I'm going to start with the calculator because that's the simplest method and what I expect most students probably use. So to use the calculator, there's a function uh, that creates confidence intervals for proportions, which is 1 prop z int. It takes a few inputs. Let's open up the calculator and take a look. So if you hit stat and go over to tests and come down to 1 prop z int. It needs a number of items that favor your event, needs the number of items out of your sample total, and a level of confidence. Most of that is readily uh, available to you in most problems. So the level of confidence in this case is 90% or 0.9. The sample size is 240. We have p hat, which is 0.4, but we need to convert that into x. So p hat is the proportion out of the sample that favors the event. So x is going to be that proportion of how many items you have in the sample. Another way to look at that is uh, p hat is x divided by n. So if you solve for x, you can multiply both sides by n. So if you just multiply n times p hat, that'll give you x. So in this case, um, and you can do it right here in the calculator function. So 0.4 times 240, that is 96. Now, if that ends up being non-integer, you do need to round that to the nearest integer too, because the calculator doesn't like these to be non-integer values. All right, 240 is n. Your level of confidence is 0.9. Calculate, and we come up with our confidence interval. So we have 0.348 and 0.54. Sorry. Uh, 348 and 0.452, it looks like. Yeah. All right, so that is the endpoints of your confidence interval. Now, for anyone who isn't using that function in the calculator, uh, let me show you how you do this through formulas. So through formulas, what you have to do, uh, for any confidence interval, you come up with the confidence interval by taking your uh, point estimate, which is p hat in this case, plus or minus your margin of error. Uh, I think actually most of the time they use ME for margin of error. Now, um, the p hat, we already have that value. So that's already taken care of. We have to find this margin of error. So the margin of error is z sub c, so the, a critical value based off of your level of confidence, times the square root of p hat times q hat divided by n. So this z sub c, uh, it's a formula that's good to know. Uh, it's the absolute value of inverse norm of 1 minus your level of confidence divided by 2. And you can do most of this in your calculator, so let's find that value in the calculator. All right, so our level of confidence is 0.9. So if I take 1 minus 0.9, divide that by 2, then that gives me 0.05. That value 0 0.05 I place into inverse norm. It's an area to the left. Uh, uh, mean and standard deviation can need to just be 0 and 1 because you're on a standard normal distribution. Uh, if you didn't see this menu show up, that's OK. Just type in 0 0.05 um, and press Enter, and you'll get the same answer here. So negative 1.645. 
but since we need to take the absolute value, we'll make it positive. Okay, now we take that value, z sub c, so 1.645, times the square root of p hat, which is 0.4, times q hat, which is 1 minus p, uh, and p being 0.4, q would be 0.6. And then divided by our sample size, and our sample size was 240. So that comes out to 0 0.052. So my margin of error is 0 0.052. So if I take my point estimate of 0.4 minus 0 0.052, and then I take that point estimate of 0 0.4 plus 0 0.052, I get 3, 0.348 and 0 0.452, exactly the same values that I came up with in the calculator originally. Either way, this is your final answer for the confidence interval.